Videos on the Dano channel are intended for audiences 13 and above. If you are 12 and under, please only watch with parental supervision. While my intended audience is PG-13, rest assured, content is always family friendly and always will be. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano, and I'm back with another review of Mandalorian. This is the seventh, right? Se yeah, this is the seventh episode. I'm stoked. It's cold where I live, and my house is very cold right now, so I decided to put on the flight suit, because, you know what, I paid enough money for it, and I don't use it enough, so I'm like, yeah, it's going in NVIDIA. So that's why I'm wearing this bright resistance orange-red kind of thing here. Uh, but, okay, so just to give you a heads up, if you're new here to the Daniel channel, what I do, I do mainly toy reviews, Star Wars toy reviews, but I've been reviewing after each episode of The Mandalorian, uh, right after, as it comes on, basically, I sit there and just take screenshots of stuff that I find interesting. And then I review it by just talking about all those screenshots. So, that's the format. And then we have a little discussion down in the comments, what we think. And usually I pose some kind of question. So, welcome, if you're new here. I hope you're subscribed and all that good stuff. Thumbs up the video if you like what you see. But for now, let's just get into my review. Okay, so that is my last slide right there. That is definitely my last slide. My first slide. Notice I end with the artwork. Uh, so this opens up in space. The, the episode opens up in space. And of course, like, he left that last planet that he was on. So I, I took a screenshot of this only because at Galaxy's Edge, when you're using the, um, the little datapad app, I love that the pieces, like, I need to sit there and look at the pieces in the datapad app of the star maps like they're showing there. Because I'm pretty sure it all matches up. I haven't looked personally. But... I just took that screenshot because I was like, oh yeah, it reminds me of the datapad app. And we've seen it in Force Awakens and stuff like that uh, when BB-8 and R2 had the map that was shared. It looked very similar to that, but I want to know how well does that match up. I'm just curious. Uh, okay, so we do see a little hollow come through from Grief Karga. Now, in the last episode, when Zero, the droid, was piloting and he kind of saw some of that and he's like, hmm, there was a little, you know, Grief Karga came up. Someone tried to tell me that that was new. That was an old hollow. I'm fairly certain that was an old hollow, and he just happened to find an old hollow that said bring the baby back or whatever. Ribs. Uh, <laughs> but this new this was a new hollow with a new plan from Grief Karga saying, hey, come back. We'll work together to kill the Imperials because they've taken over and it sucks for us. And come back, bring the baby back. We'll work something out. I know it was kind of nasty when we left. And instantly when I'm seeing that I'm like okay this is not this is not good you're getting set up for a double cross I, those were my initial thoughts is like no way no way grief cargo means well in this situation and there you guys says if you would consider one last commission it will make very much worth your while and the episode is called the reckoning directed by Deborah Chow I believe who was in the last episode she was in one of the x-wing pilots I believe I didn't know who it was because, again, I record these immediately after, so a lot of the information isn't out there. It isn't researched, so you might be watching this two or three days later and be like, well, that's who it is. And well, thank you. Thank you for commenting. Um, but I didn't know in the moment because this is recorded moments after the episode went live. So we return. What is this? Sorgan? I think Sorgan is the name of the planet. He returns to Sorgan. So once he gets this message from Grief, he's like, all right, got to gotta, uh, gotta assemble the team here. So it heads back to Sorgan. Only to find Cara Dune in, like, a weird, like, cage fighting match where they're, like, chained to each other. That was really cool. And she fought a Zabrak. I don't have a good picture of the Zabrak here. But if you follow me on Twitter, I posted a picture of the Zabrak just a little while ago. Um, I think that Zabrak is... I have his name here somewhere. I just, like, took a photo of it. Because if you watch Breaking Bad, uh, Dean... Was it Dean Norris who played... Agent Schrader and Breaking Bad, Walt's brother-in-law, the cop. I am like 99.9% .9 certain, maybe not that high. But it looks, the Zabrak looks a lot like the guy who played Dean, or that Dean played Agent Schrader in uh, Breaking Bad. So I feel like that's him. If you know who it is, let me know. It wasn't on his IMDb page. And it wasn't listed in the end as a Order of the Appearance character. I didn't see his name. So, But also didn't see any names I didn't recognize. So do what you want with that. Um, so shortly after that, I don't know why I have that shot. It's just kind of all the aliens. I like there's a little Rodian on the far, far, far corner over there. There's a little Rodian. It was cool. I thought it was pretty neat. Uh, next up, oh, okay, Baby Yoda. We just got to have a gratuitous Baby Yoda, like always. I like this little scene of them kind of having coffee and talking. I really, 
I just love. I even have my Cara Dune. I really like Gina Carano in this episode. I didn't know anything about her prior to the Mandalorian. I mean, I guess you know she's a MMA fighter or was. I don't know. Apparently, she's been in some movies. I think Fast and Fear. I don't know. I don't know what movie she's been in, but. I like her in this, and I'm glad that she's part of Star Wars now. The more I see her on camera, the more I like her. I think she's gorgeous, but her actual character and the way she plays her is really, really cool, at least in my opinion. Um, next up, okay, so they get on the ship. I love this. I love little baby Yoda, and I, we need a name for him. We were, the child sticking his head upside down. That's hilarious. But, of course, he's getting into trouble. It's fun getting into trouble. <laughs> I love that he's just taking the whole ship. And he's doing what he wants with it. That that I thought was hilarious. Like I, I definitely like wide eyed. Like oh, what are you doing? So I, I really enjoyed that part. I thought that was cool. Now this episode, one thing I do want to like mention is I feel this episode was the episode I've been waiting for. The last one was cool and I enjoyed it. I definitely like enjoyed watching it. But I mentioned last time, I feel like it didn't progress the story. So if to me, if, if you were to remove that last episode, if I never would have seen that episode where they went and rescued the guy from prison, and the Twi'leks and Bill Burke, it didn't progress the story. We didn't learn anything more really about Baby Yoda. Sure, he's got the Force. We already knew that. We didn't learn much more about the Mando other than maybe that he knew people in his past. Of course he knew people in his past. Hopefully that comes back to affect the future. The way this episode did. This episode, here we've got the was it Quili Quil? I forget. I forget his name. I should remember his name. But Nick Nolte as the Ugnaught is back. Cara Dune is back. We'll see here in just a minute. The IG Eleven is back. Oh, they meet outside the homestead, of course. <laughs> I love this part when he's describing. He's like, "Oh, well, this one looks too evolved, too ugly." So he. We don't know that he knows what he's talking about, but it kind of dispels the clone thing because if it was, he's like trying to say that like this one's not, this is more of a natural occurring alien. This isn't a clone. How I don't know how he would know, but that's how I took it. Let me know how you took this little scene where he's like, this one looks evolved, too ugly. But then he goes over to her and says, but this one looks like she was farmed in the Saito Caves of Nora. That's my new pickup line. Now, I'm married. But if I wasn't, that would be my new pickup line. <laughs> I might tell my wife that anyways. Be like, babe, you look like you were fired in the side of caves of Nora. And then she slaps me. Uh, <laughs> we see IG-11, who is now a servant. I, I, I'm glad we got to see everybody back. IG-11's back. Ugnaught's back. Carrie Dune's back. Mando's back. Child's back. Grief Karga's back. There's so much payoff. From what we've been watching the last few episodes, in this one episode, and we still have one more to go this season. This isn't even the end. There's one more next week. <sighs> okay. So, he reprogrammed, you saw, to be a servant. IG-11. It was good to see him back. And then he goes into this little, like, story about how he found him, how he reprogrammed him. Um, I thought it was cute. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. We get to see this little story. I don't know that we needed it. Um, it was a little bit of fluff for me. But it was cool. I liked seeing it, and I did enjoy it. But with the limited amount of info we're kind of getting to progress the story, I would have rather had a little bit more at the end with Giancarlo Esposito's character and learn more about that than learn learning more about IG being reprogrammed. But it did serve the story a little bit because they, they build more of that tension. I feel like a lot of this episode was tension. It was tense. It was these moments of just like, mm, what's going to happen next? That something doesn't feel right. And the whole time, this kind of foreshadows that a little bit. I don't foreshadow, but like, this really plays into that because Mando is uneasy. He's tense around IG-11 because he knows that thing's programmed to kill the child. And he, he doesn't even like droids. It's even mentioned a couple times in here. Like, dude, why don't you like droids? What's up? Yeah, there it is. Why are you so distrustful of droids? And we know because we've seen the flashbacks that his family and, like, as a child, the clone army was there. The separatist, cl not clone army, but the separatist army, the robots, droids, killed his family. So, yeah, he's got definitely a distrust going on. Um, oh, I like this part where they were arm wrestling. They're, like, practicing, kind of just playing arm wrestling. And, of course, there's Baby Yoda in the back. And what does he decide to do? <laughs> he looks so cute, but just creep, creeping his little, his little hand out there. 
<laughs> and Baby Yoda starts to choke Cara Dune. That's that's hilarious. He's getting protective. He's getting protective, like he did with the Mudhorn, like he says right here. This explains what's up with the Mudhorn. Um, so after that, let's say the Warlord were taken out as an Imperial officer. So they start to talk more about the mission and about what's going on. She she doesn't like it. She's like, why are we doing this? She definitely doesn't like it. But they show up. Oh, I love the Ugnaught built a new crib. Kind of weird. He built a new crib for the child. And they meet up with Grief and his three security guards, three bounty hunters, part of the guild, who are supposed to help and make things better. Uh, look, I love this. So this little bog wing, is that what all the fuss was about? Now he says bog wing, but I know there's going to be some people on the internet who are going to be like, the bog wing is the official name, it's a bog wing. Obviously he doesn't have wings. That's just like a name that he gave. Just like a cute name, like Nerf Herder or Moof Milker. He's like bog wing. There was another one earlier that Cara Dune said after their uh, fight. Oh, I forget what it was. It was good, though. I really liked it, and I think I want to use it. I think it's going to be like one of my new favorite insults. Uh, but I forgot what it is. I got to rewatch and like write it down so I can remember it for later. <laughs> uh, okay, so we see him. What is this? What is this yak creature? Is that a cod yak? Is that a moof? Is that a nerf? I want to know what that is. Does if anybody knows, comment down. But this is a question. If anybody knows that creature on the far end over there, what is that? Kind of looks like a cod yak, but on Solo they had cod yak jackets and they were much more furry. That thing doesn't look nearly as furry as a cod yak. Those are more like yaks. Is that a nerf? Is that a move? Also, this planet we're returning. This is where the show kind of started on this planet, and we're returning to it. And now we get to learn that there's like lava. It's almost like Celeste. Uh, I don't know if you have played Battlefront and you really get to see Celeste. Not Battlefront 2, but Battlefront 1 from 2015, I believe. Um, you can play on Celeste, and it's it's pretty cool. This reminded me a lot of that, but clearly it's not Celeste. Uh, now, oh, they get attacked by weird flying dragon dinosaur things in the middle of the night. And, again, there's that tents. They're sitting there at a campfire with a bunch of people they don't trust. You know, Mando, Cara Dune are, like, there with, you know, he doesn't trust a droid. Or the droid's not even there. IG Eleven's back at the, back at the ship, at the Razor Crest. But there's these other three bounty hunters that like you don't know nothing about them. So it's a very tense moment, only to be have the tension broken by like crazy pterodactyls zooming in. Oh, and of course, grief gets hit. One of the blurgs, I, I believe, the blur got killed because if grief cargo, I thought for a second was going to lose his arm and it was going to be like Chubbs from Happy Gilmore. Uh, but he got cut. They mentioned poison a bunch. So I feel like they didn't heal that blurg. See, there's this cut. Ooh, it's nasty, it's nasty. But I don't think they healed that blurg. So I'm pretty sure the blurg died. Um, I guess a lot of blurgs died. Now that I think about it, spoiler alert. You're, hopefully you're watching this. if you, Or you've watched it if you're watching this. <laughs> hopefully. If not, you're a weirdo. Uh, but look at that cut. That's nasty. That's real nasty. And, of course, Baby Yoda wanders up and heals him, just like he tried to do to the Mandalorian. And was that episode two, I think? I think it was the second episode. He was, like, trying to heal up. And he tried to go over, and he kept putting him back in the little crib. It was just a funny moment. But now we know he has healing powers. So, again, we've learned something major. We didn't know he had healing powers. We saw him try. We know he can lift things like the Mudhorn. But this time we learn he has healing powers. He can choke people. Baby Yoda, the child, is, is strong with the Force, that's for sure. There's a little close-up. Oh, he's kind of just put his hand on there. <laughs> and this is the part. So after he saves Grief Karga's arm, Grief Karga turns on those bounty hunters and tells them the plan. He's like, hey, okay, I got to tell you the truth. The original plan was we were going to kill you guys and take the kid ourselves. Which is... You know, of course, the double cross was set up from the very beginning. It was a little obvious, but I like how this happened. I like that I managed to get this screenshot, like, perfectly. Uh, this one I did have to go back for and rewatch and wait for the right one. But I just like that one. This actually reminds me of another thing. In this episode, I don't know if this is Deborah Chow's decision to frame the shots like this, but there were a lot of shots. If you go, if you watch even more of the slides that I have coming up, there's a lot of shots that use multiple layers. I don't know if that's her style because I'm not familiar with her or if maybe their director of photography was like very much into this. I don't know whose exact decision it was, but I love it because there's definitely this like foreground, middle and background. You'll see like when they are arm wrestling, you see Baby Yoda off in the background. 
there's a lot of that this episode, more than I feel in other episodes. And it's like very artfully done. Like it's it's gorgeous the way it's done. And this is one of those scenes where you have those three layers. He's like shoots him. And I I just appreciate I really appreciated the way that looked. And I kept noticing it throughout the episode too. Uh, so here we go. It's a trap. I, I, I had to screenshot that just for, for Akbar. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, and this is another one. We see he's riding away from them. He's going back, but he's taking the baby with him. So they're going to go and try and fool the Imperials with an empty crib. And says, go hide in the ship. Take him back to the ship. And we're going to head into town. And there's only supposed to be just a handful of Imperials left. We're going to go in there. He's going to be guarded. But we got this. Of course, they show up, and there are quite a few stormtroopers hanging out outside. I love the slouchy one. He's just like, yep, no problem, man. And now this, I believe, if I if I remember Filoni and Favreau talking about during filming, there was a scene where they needed a lot of stormtroopers, and they didn't have enough. So they actually called up members of 501st to show up for this. And so a lot of these people in these shots are 501st members, and that's really cool the part of the fan community gets to be part of the show forever. Like, they're ingrained in Star Wars for real forever. That's that's really awesome. Uh, okay, there he is. We see him kind of riding away. He's he's kind of in a hurry. He's in a hurry. Now, we get more shots of the beautiful lava planet. And then we get the, the guard. I just love how, like, beaten and, like, scarred and chunky their helmets are. They look almost like zombies. Like, the way they're painted and mucked up, they're not cleaned. You know, like, they specifically look worse than the ones outside. Uh, oh, there we go. We have uh, Werner Herzog's character is back. It was good to see. I like him. He's very, like, I'm very just intrigued by him. And just his deliveries. His line delivery is so very specific. You know, he's like, it's it's really good. I, I like it. Uh, but, of course, as we learn here in just a little bit, he doesn't make it. Uh, Empire improves. Every oh, I, li I liked this. I liked his little speech that he gave. I mean, I'm not one for the Empire and Resistance all the way, but, or Rebellion, whatever, either one, but I liked his little speech. He's talking about how, like, no, isn't there peace? We improve everything we, we touch. And so from their point of view, yeah, I guess. Not my point of view, but from their point of view. Um, it's just, I want to see the baby. This is where it gets tense again. So everyone's like, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, no, the baby. <laughs> There's no baby. They didn't bring the baby. So like he's asleep. But luckily, a phone call interrupts. And it happens to be Giancarlo Esposito. His character is a Grand Moff Gideon. Not Grand Moff, but Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon is his name. And this is messed up. He's like, double check the baby's there. You sure? And then he shoots him through the window. He's a bunch of troopers. <laughs> blasting through the window. Kills him. And he knows. And he even walks over. We see him turn it off in the hollow. So he's like a ruthless dude. He killed his own guy and tried to kill everybody inside there. <laughs> Even the droid. Poor droid. Speaking alien language. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Gonna have to censor that. Uh, but what was really cool to me is there were death troopers outside. That's who fired on him with death troopers as it debuted in Rogue One, one of my favorite Star Wars movies. It was really cool to see the death troopers. Uh, and a lot of gore. Again, those layers. Those layers of foreground, middle, back, like... Just the way, the way, in this one, Mando's up front, and then we have the wall, and then we have way back, the Death Trooper. This, every, there's so much of that in this episode, and I noticed it on this one more than others. I'm sure it's been, for sure, more than others, how you shoot a good show and make it look nice, but I, I don't know if it's a Deborah Chow thing or what, but I, I like it. I'm all, I'm all for it. Uh, oh, ho, 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 ho. the Imperial Transport, this is the toy, this is... This is what I'm, I tweeted when the show first came out. I tweeted, "Watching Mandalorian feels like Favreau and Filoni just were are nine years old again and are playing with Star Wars toys." That's what the first episode felt like for me, and I'm this what this episode felt like to me too. I mean, that's that that was a toy that wasn't in any of the movies in the seventies or eighties, but they made it a toy, and we saw it in Rebels. Showed up in Rebels. Uh, I'm not. I don't recall if it's in Clone. I'm not too versed on Clone Wars, because for me, Clone Wars the first two seasons are so hard to get into. Uh, I even tried watching recently on Disney Plus, like at work, just to have it on in the background. 
And it's just, it. I can't get into it, man. I can't. I know the later seasons get good because I've done it before on Netflix, but I've only binge watched it once. And I need to do it again. I just need to start on like season three. But either way, this I've seen in Rebels. Rebels, I was easy, easy for me to get into Rebels. And that's where I have seen this in the most action. But again, it was a toy. And now we get to see it brought to life. And heads up, if you follow Yakface, uh, yakface.com or Yakface on Twitter, he posts a lot of toy news. You'll notice I have plenty of toys. The Vintage Collection, this right here, Vintage Collection, is getting one of those soon. I think next year, probably February or March, we're going to see one of those. It means it's going to be expensive because it's Vintage Collection. But I'll be able to get my hands on one of those. And I'll probably buy an old one, too, just because I'm, I'm a nerd like that. But it was neat to see it. Tons of Stormtroopers, 501st members. Love it. Look at them. They were, like, they were supposed to be four. They were supposed to be four. <laughs> So there's this crazy, like, standoff going on. Like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? And, of course, the speeder bike guys. And I like the white speeder bikes. I thought that was kind of a cool touch. Uh, they take off. Oh, so when Giancarlo Esposito's character, Moff Gideon, i got to remember that name, Moff Gideon, arrives in his TIE fighter. It's like normal TIE fighter. But then all of a sudden the wings, like, well, I guess they do this. And then clamp down. I'm not familiar with a TIE fighter that did that. Do all TIE fighters land like that? Because I've never seen that in anything. Again, I'm not super well-versed in Clone Wars. But I don't recall seeing a TIE fighter land or do that ever. So is this a special new kind of TIE fighter? You guys let me know in the comments below because I, I don't know that. Um, and there he is. He, he lands. I like... I, he, he's, just, well, he's already established himself as kind of a mean dude by killing his own guy. Right in the beginning. That's like if you're in a western or a movie, you're like you're gonna be the villain. Killing your own henchman is definitely like the first sign that you're gonna be a you're a pretty bad guy. <laughs> so this line stuck out to me quite a bit. It means more to me than you'll ever know. Well, I hope we'll know. I really do hope we get to know why the child means so much to him. Because I don't know. That's like. It's pretty important. This, I mean, obviously this thing's strong with the Force, and we're in a time period where Force users are long gone, disappeared. Luke Skywalker was the last one anybody knows about, or the Empire specifically knows about, and he destroyed the Empire. So, now I don't know if this is before or after the Battle of Jakku, uh, because the Battle of Jakku technically was like the end end of the Empire. Not so much Endor. Endor was like the beginning of the end. But the Battle of Jakku was the end end, and I don't know where, again, let me know in the comments below if you guys know this stuff. Um, I don't have all the time in the world to be caught up on all the aftermath books and everything. And But I, I'm pretty sure the Battle of Jakku is what ended the Empire. So there's still remnants, so I'm pretty sure this is pre-Battle of Jakku, which means Luke Skywalker is still out there doing his thing. He hasn't gone into hiding yet. But still, Force users are very rare, and this, the child... Whether he is a clone or whether they're trying to clone him or whatever, it's it's more important than we will ever know, according to Moff Gideon. And that, that really piques my interest. But of course, this is like the very end of the episode. Oh, and meanwhile, the speeder bike. Oh, this. Quill? 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 Quill. Quill? Quill. We'll call him Quill. He's running back with a baby trying to make it to the ship. Speeder bike guys go after him. And it gets it, it's tense again. We see the speeder bikes. We see him running. We see everything happening in the town, and it's very tense. It's just like, oh my goodness, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And then we see the shot, and we hear the Mando coming through the comlink. Quill, are you there? Are you there? And Blurg's dead. Blurg number two dies. Prior to this, though, Baby Yoda was on the floor, and we see the swoop, not swoop, but the speeder bike swoop over and pick him up. And you can see him right there in the, in the top left corner. They're going over the horizon. They're taking off. And Quill is dead. The Blurg is dead. And that's the end of the episode. Directed by Deborah Chow. Deborah Chow, I think you did a fantastic job. Oh, man. And there's the artwork. What did you guys think of this episode? I loved it. I thought this was a great, great episode. Where's my title card? I'm going to leave it on the title card. The Reckoning. Now, we only get one more episode, so I definitely want more Giancarlo Esposito. I, it, it's the season finale, so it can't be like a another filler episode where they, you know, Mando goes on his little adventure 
meets a family or helps someone in need, and that's it. I'm fine with those episodes. It it builds his character a little bit, but this episode, The Reckoning, is what I want more of in Season 2. I want more heavy, heavy episodes. This was cool to me because everybody came back. We saw, like I said earlier, IG-11, Queel, Cara Dune, Mando, Grief Karga. All of it came back and paid off in this episode. So how they're going to wrap it up, I have no idea. But I'm loving this series. I'm so happy like Disney Plus is killing it with Mandalorian. Whether you're stoked for Rise of Skywalker or not, it seems to be a pretty baseline that everybody at least finds this show enjoyable somewhat. So good on you guys for doing this. I can't wait till next week. I can't believe, like, I, I feel like I just did a review on this the other day. But it's because of Rise of Skywalker. There's a little bit after the credits, which I'm not going to talk about here because I, I did take screenshots of it. Uh, the Rise of Skywalker little preview. It's like a scene you get to watch. <laughs> It's late. I'm not going <laughs> to... It's like 1.30 in the morning. I'm not going to go into the Rise of Skywalker stuff. We'll talk about that once the movie's out and people have had a chance to see it. But guys, again, let me know your thoughts on The Reckoning. Leave it down in the comments below. Let's talk spoilers. Let's talk about The Mandalorian. Let me know how you're feeling about this. And what are your predictions for the end of Season 1? I... Does Mando, Kara... Do they get caught? And Grief? Do they get caught? Because they're kind of all on the same side now. Especially now that... Yoda, little baby Yoda, the child, has helped out grief. He's on Mando's side now for sure. So there's been a little character change there. I like it. I'm excited. Thumbs up the video. Leave it down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and have notifications turned on. And that's it for now. So until next time, may the Force have with you? Question mark. <laughs> Goodbye forever. All right, now the video's over. It's tough decision time. What are you going to watch next? Well, guess what? I picked two videos, my last video and one that YouTube thinks you should watch next. I hope you've enjoyed everything here. Check out the links down below for links to products, Amazon affiliate links, and other ways to support the Dano channel. Thank you so much for watching. May the force be with you. Have a good Bye. Forever.